So let's discuss test of independence for categorical data. The chi-squared test procedure discussed previously can also be used to test the hypothesis of independence of two variables of classification. Okay, suppose that we wish to determine whether the opinions of the voting residents of the state of Illinois concerning a new tax reform are independent of their levels of income. Members of a random sample of 1,000 registered voters from the state of Illinois are classified as to whether they are in a low, medium, or high income bracket and whether or not they favor the tax reform. The observed frequencies are presented in table known as the contingency table. Okay, so we have here uh, three income levels, the low, medium, and high. And then uh, two uh, options. No, the first one is for those who are in favor of the tax reform, and then the second option is against the tax reform. A contingency table with R rows, in this case we have two rows, and then C columns, so here we have three, is referred to as an R by C table. So the row and column t t totals in the table are called marginal frequencies. Our decision to accept or reject the null hypothesis of independence between a voter's opinion concerning the tax reform and his or her, or her level of income is based upon how good a fit we have between the observed frequencies in each of the six cells and the frequencies that we would expect for each cell under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. Now, to find the expected frequencies, we define the following events. So, L is the event that the person selected is, is, is in the low income level, M for medium, H for high, and then F means that the person is in favor of the tax reform, A against. So, using the marginal frequencies, for example, the probability of L or the probability that the person has or is in the low income level would be uh, low income, to the total is 336, no? so 336 out of the grand total 1000. So the probability will be 336 over 1000. So in a similar manner, you can we have the probabilities for M, H, F, and A using the marginal frequencies. Now, our assumption is that the, the variables are independent. So, if the null hypothesis is true, then we will have the following. The prob the, the product the product of the the probability of the intersection is the product of their probabilities. No? If the two events are independent. So for example, the the product of L intersection F meaning the person is in the low income level and uh in favor, no? in favor of the uh, tax reform, then that would be the product of L times the product of F. So P, P over L, P this is over 1000, and then for the probability of F is 598 over 1000, okay, for L intersection F. And in a similar manner, you can obtain the following or the the following intersection 
Okay. The expected frequencies are obtained by multiplying each cell probability by the total number of observations. As before, we round these frequencies to one decimal. Thus, the expected number of low-income voters in our sample who favor the tax reform will be estimated as follows. So, to get the expected or to compute for the expected frequencies, so we have the probability of the intersection multiplied, multiplied by the grand total, the 1,000, the total frequency. So, you will get 200.9. Uh, no, the expected the expected value that is when the Hanala hypothesis is true or when the independent the variables are independent so the general rule for obtaining the expected frequencies of any cell could be uh, the column total times the row total divided by the grand total to compute for the expected frequency so let's use the Excel to compute for the expected frequency. So here, the expected value for um, low, low income and then in favor of the tax reform. <coughs> okay, so multiply the uh, column total and then the row total and then divide by 1000 so for <coughs> against and low income okay this is okay the column total times the row total on top uh, divide by 1000 okay divide by 1,000. Okay, and then for high income and in favor of the tax reform, Okay, so let us check first. Okay. In the last one okay so we compute for the chi-squared value so using the same formula as we did in good fit test so the observed values minus the expected values raised to the power 2 divided by the expected values Okay, so let's so auto 
देखिए Okay, now here we have the observed line of the expected, okay, divided by the expected, okay, copy for the next row. Okay, so we can check. Okay. And then for the high income, okay, observe minus expected quantity squared divided by the expected. And then copy for the next row. Okay, let us check. Okay. And then we con for the computed chi squared we take the sum okay which is seven point eighty seven uh, for the number of degrees of freedom we have we have two rows and then three columns so two minus one, three minus one. We have, we have two here. Your alpha is point zero five, and then using the critical value, so two, and then under point zero five we have five point. This one five point nine nine one, five point nine nine one. Okay, from the table, we as our null hypothesis is that uh, variables are independent now if we compare the computed value this is greater than 5.991 no? that is greater than so that falls within the critical region and therefore we will reject Okay, we will reject the null hypothesis, which means that the variables are not independent. Or, this means that the voting preference is independent on the level of income. <laughs>